വെൽക്കം ടു എയ്റ്റ് ഈ സി എം ദ എമർജൻസി മെഡിസിൻ ചാനൽ സർ ഷൽവിസ് യെസ് യെസ് എ ഫിഫ്റ്റി സിക്സ് ഇയർ ഓൾഡ് മെയ്ഡ് നോൺ കേസ് ഓഫ് ടി ടു ഡി എം ഹൈപ്പോ തൈറോയിഡിസം ഡിസ് ലൈപ്പിഡീമിയ പ്രസൻറ്റ് ടു ദ ഇ ആർ വിത്ത് അക്യൂട്ട് ഓൺസെറ്റ് അബ്ഡോമൽ പെയിൻ വൊമിറ്റിംഗ് അബ്ഡോമൽ ഡിസ്റ്റൻഷൻ ആൻഡ് നോട്ട് പാസിംഗ് സ്റ്റൂൾസ് ഓഫ് വൺ ഡേ ഡ്യൂറേഷൻ അവർ ഇനീഷ്യൽ ടെൻ സെക്കൻഡ് അസസ്മെൻറ്റ് പേഷ്യൻറ്റ് കോൺഷ്യസ് ആൻഡ് ഓറിയൻറ്റഡ് ഒബെയിങ് കമാൻഡ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഏബിൾ ടു സ്പീക്ക് ഫുൾ കംപ്ലീറ്റ് ഫുൾ സെൻറ്റൻസ് primary survey airway was patent no pulling of secretions in oral cavity no gurgling no hoarseness of voice c spine movements normal breathing air entry bilateral equal respiratory rate of 18 per minute spo2 96 percentage in room air coming to circulation bp was 140 bar 80 pulse rate of 95 beats per minute regular all peripheral pulses equally felt uh, two large bore iv cannulas were ins- inserted Disab- coming to disability gcs was e4 v5 m6 pupil 3 mm equally reacting to light coming to exposure normal body temperature uh, grbs was uh, 160 mg per deciliter okay so uh, can you just brief out uh, the findings and the summary uh, whatever the patient has come up with uh, so this patient is a known case of t2dm hypo- hypothyroidism dyslipidemia mm. presented with abdominal pain vomiting abdominal distension and not passing stools of one day duration okay so it's a, everything is of one day duration one day duration acute onset of uh, abdominal pain vomiting constipation okay so uh, in primary survey there is no life threatening emergency okay. there is no need of any intervention to be done only pain the patient had pain yes. so he had given any pain relief yes uh, according to the uh, it was mild to moderate pain okay uh, so who pain uh, management we have given injection pcm 1 gram paracetamol you have given 1 gram okay. so and you can give some antiemetics uh, as per the uh, symptom uh, subsiding okay now you can just go to the secondary uh, assessment uh, so adjuvants adjuvants yeah, yeah please adjuvants of primary survey vbg was taken showing a pho 7.4 pco to 40 bicarb of 25 indicating there was no acute acid base disorder okay. uh, pota- so why you want to do an uh, blood gas for this patient uh, so uh, he presented with vomiting uh, so there can be a chance of metabolic alkalosis okay and another thing is that this electrolemia can be a cause of symptoms potassium Okay, okay you can just analyze the you can get the lab results lab other lab results also and uh, one more important thing you can look for is lactate uh, because abdominal pain constipation lactic acidosis anything is there you can look in for that is only reason but here the acid base disorder was mm-hmm. not there mm-hmm. it was normal there is no metabolic alkalosis mm-hmm. electrolyte was normal mm-hmm. so that is your first adjunct second adjunct uh, we have taken an ecg uh, and it shows sinus tachycardia so. okay maybe because of the pain she is having sinus okay. tachycardia yes. okay then we go for an x-ray abdomen erect uh, as we are suspecting uh, is there any uh, perforation or any obstruction like feces. more of an obstruction, obstruction. perforation uh, rather than perforation we will think of obstruction. obstruction okay x-ray abdomen what was the finding uh, x-ray abdomen we can see multiple air fluid levels sir. we could able to see, see multiple, multiple air, air fluids, fluids level. Level. okay so uh, primarily <coughs> we are dealing with a patient who has come with an acute onset of abdominal pain vomiting and she is comorbid is diabetes hypertension hypothyroidism. and hypothyroidism. hypothyroidism so okay that is the only background she has what is her age uh, 56 sir. 56 year old okay uh, coming to the secondary survey uh, patient uh, abdominal pain was acute on onset colic in character hmm. presence in the center of the abdomen mostly no aggravating or relieving factors no postural changes and non radiating okay Uh, vomiting was uh, three episodes of vomiting non projectile bilious vomiting uh, no aggravating or relieving factors no associated symptoms the patient o- also gave history of obstipation into one day okay. and abdominal distension this obstipation yes uh, no history of any fever any uh, medications no evening rise of temperature loss of appetite uh, decrease urine output sir past history the patient gave history of resection and anastomosis of ileal loops and hernia repair on 2018 sir 2018 there is a history okay so we have got some reason why she has developed this intestinal obstruction so otherwise a 56 year old female sudden onset of abdominal pain vomiting uh, obstipation uh, need not to have any major surgical reason 
it's a malignancy maybe an elderly age group we can think of malignancy that is not again a one day onset will be rare we'll have like two or three days they will have started developing a little bit of nausea constipation then uh, decreased food intake they would have come to the emergency so that is a usual pattern but here there is one day history sudden onset they have come to the emergency room with abdominal pain obstipation and uh, the patient is having multiple episodes of vomiting also so there is a past history of surgery ileal yes, resection done for yes. what uh, reason for that surgery ഇഷ്കിമിയാസ്റ്റൈൻ right maybe the ish- uh, intestine would have uh, necrosed or something and they have resected and they have joined it back so why she should have developed this that that is an again an important thing because again a female patient coming to you with this what will be the possibilities that you need to consider at then age of around 45 to 52 what all the possibilities that you can consider torsion or neoplasms neoplasms okay and and there is neoplasm you would have given some adjunct treatments also so that was not done here mesenteric ischemia is another one of the possibility atrial fibrillation any history is there diabetes mellitus hypertension all those things are there so atrial fibrillation mesenteric ischemia one differential diagnosis we can keep in mind so why uh, we don't have any details of that surgery only thing she had undergone a surgery for an ileal resection has been done and an anastomosis has been done so what would be the reason right now she is having um, reason for her uh, possibility of intestinal obstruction uh, most probably adhesions adhesions can be there or can be a structure at the anastomotic site we are not sure it can be a structure a simple structure at the anastomotic site or what would be the reason for her first time what was the reason for her first time for her intestinal obstruction we don't know maybe that has repeated maybe some autoimmune vasculitis all those things we need to keep in mind 50 year old not very common to have a neoplasm like again a female patient 60 65 usually that presentation will be of that age so now if she developing again and again the same problem we need to address that issue that is one important thing so uh, the issues that we are right now having is an intestinal obstruction here this patient has an history of previous surgery so that is the only thing so now we have made a diagnosis we have done a diagnosis so as an emergency physician what are the primary objectives for this patient management uh, so uh, by x ray we done we know came to know that the patient is having acute intestinal obstruction yes uh, we have arranged two large bore iv cannulas and the blood gas other everything was same the first thing the patient, the patient have patient symptomatic management. management you have done that yes. pain relief vomiting and uh, you have done something for her uh, pain also so that is done the next thing then we will keep the patient in npo we need to prevent further complications okay. that is the next thing so whatever has happened has happened we need to prevent further complication first to keep her on npo yeah. then and we insert a rails tube mm. for decompression mm. uh, then we have start not just inserting the rails tube we have to decompress it also that is also very important why you want to we have to prevent aspiration so that is one thing that can happen because the patient is not passing motion and he has a recurrent episode of vomiting she can just suddenly aspirate and desaturate so that is a one possibility that we need to keep in mind insert a rails tube and aspirate the contents so once you are doing the aspiration the chance of uh, uh, aspirating pneumonia is less so uh, that is one most important thing that you need to keep in mind as an ed physician our job is pretty simple one the patient have developed this what all things to be done symptomatic management pain relief we have done that vomiting we have done that and we have to prevent further complication and look for electrolyte abnormalities electrolyte abnormalities most common one will be potassium so potassium hypokalemia anything is there that can again precipitate ileus so that should be avoided then you need to have a now we have to come for a conclusion of your diagnosis you have said that intestinal obstruction is there now why she has developed this intestinal obstruction what is the reason for her intestinal obstruction we need to find so our investigation will be directed towards that so elaborate what all things was done for her uh, sir abdominal examination yes uh, inspection abdomen was distended flanks full uh, no scar no sinuses no visible peristalsis scar should be there no uh, ah, yes, she had a surgery uh, no uh, surgery scar was <laughs> there, 
ഹെർണിയൽ ഓറിഫൈസസ് നോർമൽ ജെനിറ്റലി അപ്പിയേഴ്സ് ടു ബി നോർമൽ പാൽപേഷ്യൻ സൂപ്പർഫിഷ്യൽ നോ ടെൻഡനസ് നത്തിങ് ഡീപ് പാൽപേഷൻ നോ ഓർഗാനോ മെഗാലി നോ ഗാർഡിങ് ഓർ റിജിഡിറ്റി നോ ഫ്രീ ഫ്ലൂയിഡ് Uh, no guarding and rigidity yeah. that is very important thing so you are giving that there is no evidence of peritonitis so that is one thing so there is intestinal obstruction but there is no peritonitis so we are almost ruling out a perforation by your clinical examination so we are just going into an hypo probably an intestinal obstruction cause here it's mostly a surgical cause okay uh, coming to percussion uh, tympanic not observed uh, bowel sounds were exaggerated sir okay uh, Rectal What will ex- ideally happen in initial obstruction? Uh, Bubble so sounds. It can be uh, dynamic or adynamic ob- obstruction. Sometimes it cannot be, you cannot hear anything or it can be hyper, uh, more dynamic also, like what is happening here. So a lot of peristalsic movement, you will be able to hear that. Then? Uh, our clinical impression was uh, acute intestinal obstruction secondary to adhesions without perforations. Okay. So now uh, we have to come as I told we have to confirm the diagnosis why she has developed. So how will you proceed? Uh, so we will go for a CT abdomen. Okay. Ultrasound? Uh, ultrasound? Simple uh, ultrasound we can do. So we can just see bowel wall edema anything is there or it is just an adhesion or we are not able to see any clear picture. So basic ultrasound you can do. It's a bedside investigation. So it can be done as an adjunct to your primary survey. Just like you've taken an x-ray, you can just take an ultrasound also. And you can rule out any of the major issues, peritonitis, any free fluid in the abdomen, all those things you can be easily detected by your ultrasound. Then definitely diagnosis, you need a CT here. So CT here, it's again uh, one or two questions is that you are not suspecting a perforation. So uh, with, the, with, with oral contracts or IV contracts, which one do you prefer? What was done for this patient? Mm-hmm. Kind, kind. You don't have the information, usually they will go ahead with an IV mm-hmm. contrast. Oral contrast, it can be a double-edged weapon here. Okay. So, oral contrast, if you give this patient, if there is any perforation, it can leak into the intestine. So, that's one thing. But we are not suspecting a perforation here. But the other problem is that if the patient is not decompressed with a rile stool, if you are giving again, 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 asking the patient to drink, they can aspirate the same uh, thing that you are given as for contrast material. So, you have to be very, very careful when you are giving oral contrast. So, I prefer in a busy ED to not to give an oral contrast. But if you have a, definitely somebody is following up the patient, somebody is along with the patient throughout, then you can think of giving an oral contrast. But otherwise, oral contrast itself, they can aspirate and they can have problem. Here. And we are dealing with the patient with intestinal obstruction. So, IV contrast, our idea is exactly what is happening to the intestine, what is the blood supply to the intestine, whether it is affected, whether any evidence of mesenteric ischemia or it is just adhesion. Uh, maybe adhesion we need to do adhesiolysis or whether oh, whether the first part time she had an industrial obstruction whether the same thing has recurred all these ideas you will be able to get so what was the ct finding uh, ct finding show gross dilated general uh, jejunal loops with uh, enhancement like uh, suggestive of small bowel obstructions okay so what they did for this uh, they were planning for conservative management for the initial 24 to 48 hours mm-hmm. and the symptoms are not subsiding uh, they are going for surgery So right now this patient uh, is on conservative it's management. on conservative management ideally what they have done maybe they have thought it is part of an adhesion since there is no bowel ischemia as has developed and she is not gone in for any evidence of sepsis there is bowel ischemia ga sepsis she will go to suddenly deteriorate so that has not happened for her so right now they have just decompressed her put her on some conservative iv fluids kept her on npo and observing her that is what they have done for this Okay, now uh, what are the other common causes for similar presentation? We have got a patient post-surgical. What are the other reasons by which the patient can come to the ED? With an acute sort of an constipation, intestinal features of intestinal obstruction. What are the other differential diagnoses that you can think of? Uh, uh, so the differential diagnosis of intestinal obstruction or... Uh, Any, similar presentation. Similar presentation. So you, you just take out the surgery from this patient away. Uh, so it can be uh, depends on the age sir okay. uh, most common presentation of abdominal pain vomiting it can be a acute gastritis okay uh, but with constipation you have to link all these things together acute intestinal uh, abdominal pain vomiting constipation sir uh, there can also be uh, other causes of intestinal obstruction like uh, tb can be any crohn's disease okay uh, a dynamic obstruction like uh, paralytic ileus paralytic ileus mesenteric this patient is having what hypothyroidism so properly improperly treated hypothyroidism 
hypokalemia all those things can attribute to that so all those things you can maybe it not is a medical cause for, a surgical cause for an intestinal obstruction there can be other cause for ileus also which need to be kept in mind so uh, this patient is a pretty straightforward thing you had a patient who had come with uh, probable post surgery then this is the differential diagnosis very easy straightforward so uh, if you wanted to give a prescription to this patient okay your medication order sheet can you just elaborate what are the pres- what will be your prescription order this patient is in front of you starting from your complete orders that you want to give to the nurse investigation i am just leaving it all, all investigation we have done medication orders what are all the medications that you will put in for this patient uh, sir with the acute presentation with the acute presentation, presentation the for this patient sir uh, first what will your instruction as you said you have to keep npo NPO, that will be the first instruction second insert a rails to right. and decompress okay. the stomach then i will go for sir iv fluids to correct dehydration and okay stress. so no, two things we have to consider we have to have nutrition as well as dehydration need to be corrected and electrolyte imbalance need to be corrected so your order should include all those things then you have to give a pain killer for that pain analgesic is mandatorily required so paracetamol or you need to go for an nsaid depending upon the situation you need to have a next thing then you have to have a pantoprazole maybe a gastritis or anything some antiemetic again the problem is that you need to select an antiemetic which is centrally acting which will be ideal for this patient rather than increasing the peristaltic movement a prokinetic agent which can increase the peristaltic so ondansetron can be an agent of choice then you need to ch- see what are her routine medication diabetic management she will be diabetic you are keeping her in po so how is her sugar status depending upon that you need to put her on insulin then what else you need to have in hypothyroidism whether she need to skip in the tablet no she need to continue the tablet for hypothyroidism systemic hypertension tablet they need to continue so those tablets there is no npo you need to continue those tablets for them and next question will comes whether you need to put any antibiotics or not that is my question what will be the next prescription will be an antibiotic yes. you need any antibiotic or not as so we have to give i mean antibiotics so what will be the agent of choice that you will have to we have to cover gram negative and gram negative and and, and anaerobes that's the two things that we are not concerned about gram positive organism here we need to have a gram negative and an anaerobic coverage for that you can select ciprofloxacin ceftriaxone metronidazole so this will be the options that is available you can either give ceftriaxone with metronidazole or you can give ciprofloxacin with metronidazole anything that has got a gram positive and an anaerobic coverage but here maybe uh, this patient has not gone into sepsis but definitely she is a potential candidate for going for sepsis so we have to give all those drugs so that will be your prescription then you have to be very clear when you are writing all those things that's why i wanted you to elaborate on this so these are the things that you have to look in for the next 6 to 12 hours then you need to reassess her pain management then again fluid hydration whether we need to continue whether what is happening to her sepsis so it should be a continuous process we need to update her prescription okay so she is under conservative management right now okay. any other things that you need to add on okay Okay, so then in a nutshell our idea will be whenever you are suspecting an intestinal obstruction as in the ED our primary objective keep the patient NPO do simple things correct her dehydration manage the pain and if possible insert a rails tube and decompress the stomach and you find out why she is having an intestinal obstruction x-ray abdomen you can take and you can confirm the diagnosis and depending upon the availability of CT you can proceed for that okay thank you